EcoBoost time! <laughs> Welcome back! And uh, I took my 2019 Ford Edge 2 liter uh, EcoBoost engine made in Valencia, Spain. Uh, not Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, <laughs> I took and did an oil change on it. And I'm going to assume that this oil change was the second oil change it had. There's no way that it had, you know, 25% life at 8,800 miles. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, so I'm going to assume that somewhere along the line between when I bought it at 6,000 and it and it was made, there was an oil change someplace. So uh, we're going to assume it was the second oil change. We're also going to assume that we only put about 4,000 miles on it. Okay, and uh, we're also going to assume that it was a Motocraft uh, 5W30 blended oil because, hey, it's the cheapest oil and they're selling the car. What do they care, right? So anyway, uh, I went and did an oil change on it, and uh, as you saw in the video, I put some uh, Redline uh, Professional 5W30 in it, but that's neither here nor there. We're here to talk about an oil sample on uh, Lilu, my 2019 Ford Edge Titanium all-wheel drive 2.0 EcoBoost and we're going to concentrate on the oil that came out of that EcoBoost and that uh, oil change and uh, some interesting thoughts and processes on it. I'm just going to read you what the uh, the oil test is and I'll post it up here for you all to see but uh, basically we did Blackstone oil test and uh, I had 8,800 miles on it and let's see uh, they basically said that Lilu's first oil sample has a little extra copper and silicone and that not, that's not all that surprising or concerning because most likely the copper is coming from the wear in material off of the new brass bronze parts that are in the engine. Uh, those don't get a factory polish when the engine is assembled and as such copper tends to take a little longer to clear out of a new engine than the other wear metals do. Silicon is most likely uh, some leftover sealer and uh, both it and the copper should be lower. Next time, the 1.3% fuel can often come from normal use, but we'll keep an eye on it. The 3.0 TBN is still strong, so they said try for 6,000 miles. Uh, yeah, in, in other words, even they are recognizing the fact you don't want to go higher that quickly. It, it, this is not a 3.5 Duratec which is forgiving. Uh, the EcoBoost is a small high output little engine. Thus it has other demands on the oil that the 3.5 Duratec does not have. A Duratec will be so forgiving with the oil usage uh, compared to the EcoBoost. So that is why I'm here talking about this oil test in the fact that it had three parts per million uh, aluminum, the chromium was zero, the iron was nine, and the copper was 11. Uh, nothing to be writing home about, but they did flag it. The lead was zero, the tin was zero, the molybdenum was 16, which tells me the oil did not have much molly B in it, uh, so it's a cheap oil. Uh, nickel was zero, manganese was one, silver was zero, titanium was zero, and potassium was six parts per million. Uh, boron was 101 parts per million, and the silicon was 42. Like they said, as oil changes go, that should drop. We'll see at the next oil test. Uh, sodium was eight, which is something you want to watch out for. In, in other aspects on that because sodium and potassium and all this other stuff you don't want to have too much because that's like a coolant thing uh, but uh, calcium was 1198 which rings a bell to me for motorcraft okay because that's about what I think motorcraft is running for their calcium for their synthetic blends magnesium was 569 parts per million Phosphorus was 712, and the uh, zinc was 717. Now, under the EcoBoost, you're never going to find an oil above 800 parts per million zinc because that is bad for the EcoBoost. Okay, it's an SM Plus oil they put in there, I'm assuming, uh, being that it's that low on that. Uh, the barium was 13 parts per million. 
Now, here it gets the, the interesting part, and the, the fuel, keep in mind, the, the amount of fuel plays into this, uh, into what happens to your oil viscosities. Uh, the SUS viscosity was 51, which means it was below the 56 to 63. That's right, the viscosity has thinned. Uh, the CST viscosity was 7.56, which was below the minimum 9.1 to 11.3 for that viscosity of oil. Again, fuel had entered and thinned the oil down. So with an EcoBoost, with fuel getting into it through this direct injection, your viscosities will start thinning, which means you have less protection, oil film on your parts and everything else. It's washing it essentially. So you're gonna have issues. So another reason not to run your oils for a long extended period of time on an EcoBoost. The 2.0 especially, and I'm sure the 2.7, 3.0s and 3.5s are no different. Uh, the fuel level was 1.3%. And I've never had an oil test with that much fuel in it. Under all the Duratex I ran, never had I have an oil percentage or a fuel percentage that high in any Duratex. Uh, so that tells me the EcoBoost is a different creature. It's going to be different, it's going to run different, and it's going to process the fuel differently. Uh, that therefore means you have to pay attention to your oil changes. We are not talking 10,000 mile oil changes here. I'm not going to push it that far. I may try to edge it up as I go. I went 4,000 this time, I'll go 6,000 this next time. If I see even worse numbers, I'm going to drop it back down until I find out where my happy medium is on this EcoBoost, you know, depending on your driving conditions and everything else. Most of the miles I put on this oil when I drove it were all highway, and I still had high fuel, although I do have some idle time and everything else on it, but most of it was highway driving. Uh, the insolubles were pretty good at 0 0.1, so the insolubles were really low, filter was doing a good job, and the TBN was 3.0, total base number, uh, which means it had plenty of life in it because once you get down to 1.0, that's when uh, your oils are going to start having problems and, and you want to change it. So plenty of life left in this oil, it's just that it was being diluted. And uh, we don't want thinner oil on an EcoBoost, we want thicker oil uh, to protect the parts. So we're going to work at keeping that. I'm going to go ahead and post up this uh, in the Mac T Garage website and also I'll have it in in uh, Facebook group so you guys can all look at it to see where it's at what's going on and uh, of course this video at the end I'll let it let it run for a little bit so you guys can uh, freeze frame it and read it to your heart's content as far as the numbers and everything but uh, that is how it all turned out for the uh, 2.0 EcoBoost for probably its second oil or third oil change in its life uh, but first one for me at 8,800 miles. Uh, I'm not worried at this point. I got to see what trends are and how I drive it and, and how it's responding. And then, of course, I may change oils up depending on what's going on to try to find an oil that works best with it. Uh, right now, I'm using the Professional for, from Redline. I'll do a couple oil changes that, see where I'm going with it. And if I'm happy, I may stay with it. If not, I may switch it up to another oil uh, that uh, you know I tend to maybe gravitate to. Uh, there's certain oils I think I like, uh, but in the EcoBoost, it's a whole new critter. Uh, what worked in the the 3.5 Duratec, you know, uh, NA engine is not maybe going to be the best oil for the EcoBoost. So. A uh, whole new critter, whole new situation, and a whole new process. So we're going to go ahead and see what's happening. But I just thought I'd share with you where I'm at with the 2.0 EcoBoost and uh, the Valencia engine, no less. Uh, and I stress that enough because <laughs> I'm just happy I don't have a Cleveland. That's all I can say. Uh, but hopefully uh, the, the 2019 plus Clevelands are fixed. Uh, that's all I'm going to say on that. But anyway, that's my oil testing on my 2.0 EcoBoost and uh, my 2019 Ford Edge. I hope you like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook and also subscribe to his YouTube channel. 
watch my videos and help me out, help me produce more content in that manner. Of course, make comments, and I try to answer once in a while, but hey, folks, I got a day job, too. And uh, if nothing else, uh, Band of One's always got some great music. Mercy Girl's always got some one-liners for you. And my feet hit the floor today. I'm having a great day, and I want you to have a great day, too. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production.